Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Justy Balawalia. I'm an attorney at law. Uh, I practice in Los Angeles. And one of the areas of my practice involves family law. And uh, I have been very recently introduced to SAN and its uh, purposes. Uh, I have had the opportunity of helping uh, one or more of their clients in trying to resolve their own personal situations within their household. Uh, and I'm talking of the wife uh, being subjected to what we call unusual and cruel punishment at the hands of their spouses who, and these women are living practically in perpetual servitude uh, uh, with the expectation that they are not going to receive any money and that they have come to this country, they're, they're discouraged from ever learning that California and pra practically, practically the entire country, uh, their, the wife is accorded equal rights as the husband, but because of their own lack of education, lack of sophistication, and uh, basically their, their education from back home, they are living under the false pretense, under the false uh, belief that if they leave their husband, they're going to be devastated and that they're going to be out on the street. And one of the cases that I handled on behalf of San involved taking a woman to court whose husband was really giving her a hard time, including physical and corporal punishment. And then I guided the, the client through not only the, the, the civil system, but also through the criminal system. Uh, the, the husband was being prosecuted for uh, domestic violence and uh, guided the, the client uh, as to what she or she, she should or should not be doing in this regard. Uh, I'd also like to follow up on what Jenny mentioned uh, and quite so eloquently. After the criminal prosecution is over and done with, the client who has lived in servitude for say four to five years as it usually happens, what then? She has been not, more, more likely she, has not been paid any wages uh, for the number of years she, that she has lived in servitude. And the question is, after the perpetrator has been sent away to jail or otherwise convicted, well, what happens to this lady? How, how does she get back on her feet? She, she lacks education. She lacks uh, any uh, social adeptness and uh, she is going to have another problem uh, in her hands as soon as the government is done through with her case. So my intention is now to help those clients resurrect themselves financially uh, by civilly prosecuting the people who have kept her in servitude. Because for the last four or five years that, that she's worked, she's probably not received any money. and. Um, uh, She's now coming out uh, with the help of Sand and other well-wishers, and the question is, what then? Uh, is she uh, going to seek employment, which looks very difficult because she doesn't have the required education? So my role at that point would be to seek some kind of economical redemption from the people who kept her there and prevented her from earning a living. So when did you first, um, how did you first come to be associated with, with San? I got a, a, a phone call from Hamid uh, asking me to step in and help a particular case. And I looked it over, the, the facts were quite compelling, the, and I felt sorry for the, for the client. And then I went out and helped her and guided her through the civil system. And I think she's uh, better off now. I don't think I can ever make her happy for all the lost time, but she certainly is in a better position now. So now. My, my role here um, is really to give the client a financial underpinning after they've been 
pulled out of their misery because I expect them not to have any money because the money has been kept away from them or uh, if it is not a servitude situation but uh, a domestic situation the husband probably is running or has been running the financial household for all the years and if he is divorced her uh, she's going to be out on the street. He's probably not going to pay her any support. So my job would be to make sure that she receives the necessary support for herself and for the children if there are any. Uh, also to make sure that if there are any assets that the husband has walked away with, that she gets half of that under California's community property laws. So my job really is to provide a financial backing to the woman uh, from either her ex-employer or from her ex-husband. How do? What do you think are the main um, legal problems facing the South Asian community? What do you think? Are the, uh, well, there are not as many legal issues that confront the. The, the clients, it's mainly a social problem. They do not want to come forward because they have been taught since day one that they are secondary to their spouse and that they can only walk out of the marriage when the spouse says you can. So I don't believe it's, it is as much as a, a legal problem as much, much as it is really a social problem. Um, you can only get so, uh, legal redress once you break out of your social stigma and that's when I step in and try and help the client. What do you... How, would, how do you think SAN could best I, serve I just think that SAN is, 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 a, is, is an organization where uh, an abused individual should be able to easily turn to and get a counselor on the line, a live person who can ask the person in a non-threatening manner what's wrong and how, how we can help you we have, and to assist the person um, through at least an initial interview to, uh, to, to, to let them know that there are people out there to, to help them, to support them and if necessary take them either through or assist them through the uh, criminal prosecution system as uh, Jenny uh, made reference to or um, on the civil side where I come in that there are avenues available uh, to make sure that they receive what they ought to receive. And uh, in the one case that you handled with San or you assisted San in, what did you how, what did you think, you know, in terms of uh, how the case was referred to you or how it had been handled till you stepped in or just the kind of work that San uh, had well, done up until then? Oh, I think San had done a, uh, had a, done a wonderful job. Um, I don't think that if, um, uh, or I, I, let me restate this, if San had not uh, assisted the, the client, uh, she would still be in her house miserable as ever. Uh, San gave her an opportunity to open the front door of her house and express uh, her dissatisfaction with the status quo and uh, she really would still be living in misery had it not been for San's uh, intervention. Uh, I think San has done a good job. Uh, it, before the case came to me, um, she uh, was really being advised by, by San, but San can only go so far, I believe. Um, I, after the, the client is referred to San, then we really have to take the case one step forward, either in a criminal direction or in a civil direction, to really help the client uh, achieve what they're looking for. And very often they won't know uh, what their substantive rights are until someone sits them down and says, this is what it is and uh, we can certainly assist you in, in realizing what, what ought to be given to you. Given that you think that a lot of the problems that the South Asian community and especially women within the South Asian community are grappling with are more social problems like you said, what do you think is the best way 
of trying to educate these people um, about their rights or even just you know educate them to help them acclimatize to living in the United States without their families, away from their communities and away from the societies that they've probably grown up in or spent a majority uh, portion of their life in. Uh, you know, just to, how do you think that these women should be educated in a way as to prevent these cases of servitude and, and abuse from, from occurring? Do you th see well, any effective way of doing this? Um, I, I'm, I'm generally an optimist, but uh, in this particular situation, I, I uh, I'm at a loss as to how